In this video I am going to show you how to modify Unity's tilemap at runtime. As an example we will take a tilemap and set it on fire, switching the tiles from various grass tiles to burnt ash tiles. If you are just looking for a quick answer on how to change tiles at runtime, click the link to jump ahead to that part. But if you keep watching you will learn how to do a lot of cool stuff like making this burning fire effect that can easily be adjusted so every kind of tile burns differently. As always I will show you clean and agile code. Also, you will help me to not ruin the average video watch time, which the YouTube algorithm punishes badly. So thank you very much and let's get started. I am using Unity version 2019.4.2 and will use the project I created in the previous video, where I showed you how to store data and tiles by combining them with scriptable objects. The fire animation was also created in the previous video. I have linked both of them in the description. You can also just download the fire prefab from the link in the description. For this tutorial we are going to create two more scripts called fire and fire manager. The fire script goes on the fire prefab and the fire manager in a new game object with the same name. We also need a new tile for burnt ground, so I bring in a sprite, drag it into the tile palette to create a tile asset, and then create a new tile data object and assign the new tile. Just a quick reminder, for every type of tile there is a scriptable object that stores some data, and the map manager can find that data when we give it a tile or just a world position. The walking speed and poisonous floats were example from the last video. We need some new ones here, so let's open the tile data script. First let's make a bool to check whether the tile can even burn, so we can make sure that stone or water tiles don't weirdly catch on fire. If a tile can burn, we will use some floats to control how the fire behaves. First we have the spread chance, which determines the chance of the fire spreading to a neighboring tile. Second is the interval, which we use to check every x seconds if the fire is spreading, and lastly total burn time. That way you can mimic different kinds of fire. So for example a ball of hay would burn quickly and setting stuff around it on fire, while trash or so would burn for a long time but not spread that badly. Having lived in Asia, I am unfortunately quite familiar with the way trash burns. Let's do the fire script next, because it is pretty simple. The fire manager creates a fire game object and then starts it by calling a function called start burning. This one takes three parameters. The position of the fire as a vector 3 integer, because that represents the position of tiles in the tile map, and the tile data, which is of course the data connected to the tile this fire is placed upon. And lastly, a reference to the fire manager, so it can communicate back when it wants to spread. All of that stuff will be saved in private variables, so we can use it in other parts of the script. For the process of burning we could use a coroutine here, but I think a simple timer in update will do. We only need two variables, burn time counter and interval counter. Both of them will be set in the start burn function. In update we reduce the burn time counter by time.delta time every frame and if it is zero or lower, the fire manager is informed that it has finished along with the position. That function doesn't exist, but if you hit control plus period, it will be created by Visual Studio including the parameters. After that the script destroys the game object. This works fine for now, but it is bad practice because we are creating unnecessary memory allocations. I will soon do a video on how to write an automatic object pool that can be reused for every game. In update we also reduce the interval counter. When it reaches zero we first reset it and then tell the fire manager it's time to spread. We're passing in the position and the chance to spread. Again we can just type out the function name with the parameters and hit control plus period to create it automatically. This is it for the fire script, let's move on to the fire manager. First, we need a reference to the tilemap we are working with. So include the Unity tilemap namespace and create a reference to the tilemap, which we will assign in the inspector. We also need a reference to the kind of tile we want to replace the burn tile with, so let's create an ash tile. In the finished burn function, we can then replace whatever tile is at that position with the ash tile. 
That's it for this function, let's move on to the spreading part. In the spread fire function we need to go through all the 9 neighboring tiles and see if they can burn. By subtracting 1 from the x position we go one tile to the left, by adding 1 we go one to the right, same goes for the y position. To do that we will just make a nested loop. First we go from left to right and inside we go up and down. By default a loop starts at 0 but as you can see here we can of course start at any number we want. So this is what we do. We start at position.x-1, that's the first one. And then we keep increasing as long as it is lower than position.x plus 2. So it just wants 3 times. Minus 1, then 0 and then plus 1. And then we do the same for the y position. C sharp recently added the option to make local functions, meaning a function within a function, and I think a scenario like this works quite nicely for it. Below the loop make a function that is neither private nor public, call it try to burn tile, taking in a vector 3 integer as a parameter. Now we can call that function from inside the nested loop, creating a new vector 3 integer and using 0 as the z value. Whether a tile can burn or not depends on the type of tile and also if there already is a fire on it. The active fires can easily be tracked with a list of vector 3 integer. So create that list and initialize it. Then we simply check if that position is already in that list and if so we just exit the function. And of course we also need to remove the position when the fire finished burning. Then we check if a tile is even burnable and for that we need the data. In a previous video we already created a similar function which took the world position as a parameter and returned the walking speed from the tile data. Let's make a more general one that takes the position of the tile map and returns the tile data. All it does is first get the tile type at that position and then look up the connected tile data in the dictionary. It also checks if there even is a tile and returns null if there isn't. Because if your fire is aggressive enough, it will eventually reach the end of the tile map and then try to spread to tiles that don't exist and that will throw you an error. So back in the fire manager script, we can request the data to check if the tile can burn. For that we need a reference to the map manager, which will be signed in the inspector. If the tile can burn, we need to check the spread chance. Simply get a random number between 0 and 100 and if the number is lower or equal to the spread chance, the tile will be set on fire. This should be its own function, so we can call it from other places, for example to start the first fire. Call it set tile on fire and pass in the position and the tile data, so we don't have to request that again. Next we need a reference to the fire prefab, so add that on top and serialize the field. The setTileOnFire function instantiates the prefab and sets the position for which we need to convert the tilemap position back to good old world space. Then it calls the startBurn function, passing in the required parameters. Lastly the grid position is added to the active fire list. This is pretty much it. The only thing we need now is a way to start the fire. We can just make a function in update that checks for a mouse click and if so converts the mouse position to a grid position, gets the corresponding tile data and uses it to trigger the set on fire function. Back in the editor, let's assign the references and then set some values for how the tiles should burn. The ash and stone tiles simply can't burn, but the grass tiles will burn for 4 seconds and slowly spread. Lastly, the map manager needs to know about the data for the ash tile, so just add it to the list. And then of course, just try out different values and have fun. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. If you have any questions, feedback or requests, just leave a comment. Thank you and goodbye.